So do you condemn Muhammad when he desecrates the pagan Kaaba? Well, you need to read your hadiths, bro. Yeah, of course, we'll come back in a minute. Oh, he can, he can film. He can yeah, no, but you're filming him, though. Yeah, what are you doing? He can film me. You can never have a private talking. All right, listen, I can play your face or whatever. If you want to carry on, I can play your face. No, don't play my face. Just don't put me camera. Just film me. Just put the camera in a way that it films me and he's not on camera. Right, you got a mask on, so we don't need to blow your face. No, but don't just open the camera. I'm near the mic. I'm near the mic. I'm near the mic. Where's the mic? So he, right. Where's the mic? It's here. Are you going to talk now? You're going to talk now? Yeah, I'm going to talk. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, basically, where are you going now? Well, so here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, Muslims condemn... Oh, okay, I'll hold it. So then I can hold it for him. Can I hold it for both of us? So, so Muslims... Muslims condemn desecrations of the Quran, desecrations of mosques. But but Muhammad but Muhammad desecrated the Kaaba that belonged to the pagans, and Muslims for fourteen hundred years have been desecrating churches. Do you condemn those practices? So you I'm getting slightly confused. We were talking about freedom of speech and now you're saying what? Because you said you didn't agree with being offensive. Yeah, that's correct. I, don't I, would, I would say desecrating a pagan uh, temple is offensive, no? Yeah, I will say that's offensive. So was Muhammad wrong? I'm not, too, I'm not aware of what happened there, so I can't tell you. I'm more, what I'm more concerned about is what's happening in present times within London. So what I'm saying to you, for example, is that I have Christian friends. And I meet up with my Christian friends and we talk about strategies that help us stay on the straight path, whether they be Christian or whether they be Muslim. So, for example, I saw you on one of your videos speaking to one of your Christian people and you said that he should read the Bible and he should open it at certain pages and what he can see from there is he should read the pages and it's almost like the, 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 the Creator will be talking to him through the Bible. I remember you saying something like that. Do you recall what, what that? Did you, what was the last bit of that? I said, I remember you saying something along the lines of when someone's reading the Bible, they can open it at certain random pages and then it's like the Bible's talking to them directly. And yeah, you know, yeah. It's, a, it's a form of Christian spirituality. Yeah. So, so, Christians, so Christians are encouraged to meditate upon uh, Christian scriptures. Yeah. So one of the ways that we do this yeah. is that, for instance, we read the text and we and we open we, we 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 become aware of how our emotions are responding to the text. What is what line is it from scripture that fires something in our minds? And then where when that happens, when that self awareness happens of something, we're then told to meditate on that because that will tell you something about yourself. But we started this conversation about freedom of speech. One second, one second. We started this conversation about freedom of speech, and I said that speech should not be prescribed. Islam prescribes free speech. So I, I, I want to say to you that you want the benefits of free speech when it suits you, but the moment Muslims are in a position to impose Sharia law, you will take away the free speech of others. Do you agree that free speech is not in Sharia law? Okay, so what I'm saying to you again, and I'll, I'll make the statement again, yeah? I'm not too interested in what's been going on thousands of years ago. I'm living in a city called London. I okay. about what happens in yeah. the future. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm living in a city called London. Now, my next door neighbours were Indian and they were Christian. And I was, they helped, I come from a family of, of seven kids. So my Christian next door neighbours helped my mum raise our family. And the house next to them was a Jewish household. And the Jewish people in that household, the Jewish older couple, Mr. and Mrs. Steiner, they also helped raise us. So me as a Londoner, because I'm surrounded by people of different faiths that have helped me and that I've helped also, what I do when I encounter Christian people or people uh, of, of different religions, I try to see what similarities we have and what we do is we learn from each other and find common ground. So what I find strange is a man like yourself who has so much Christian knowledge coming here week in week out and getting into so many arguments with Muslims 
when me and my Christian friends sit down together, we eat food and we leave the meal with him increasing in his levels of faith in Christianity and me increasing my levels of faith in Islam. Okay, can I so what, what's that? Let me finish. So what I'm saying to you is when you spoke about the strategy that you use about the Bible and reading from the Bible, I myself apply that strategy to reading from the Quran. So you as a Christian actually taught me something about the spirituality that you have and, and, and the principles and the strategies you use in your Bible, which I've applied to my Quran, which I found actually helped me. So what I don't get is why, one second, what I don't get is why someone like yourself and why certain, Random, one second, let me finish, let me finish. Land on a question. One second, and why certain Muslims are coming here mocking your religion, saying three in one and all that nonsense, and why you're mocking their religion, if you're supposed to be a man of God, and they're supposed to be a man of God, what you are actually doing is... Okay. Quite, one second, so, so, hold on, hold on, no, 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 bro. So fit, no, 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 wrap it up, bro, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Wrap it up. What I was trying to say to you is what you actually seems to be doing is when you come here and start mocking the Muslims, and the Muslims come here and start mocking you lot, the people that are not from religion are watching it and you're putting them off religion and God. Okay, allow, allow me to reply. So, so, I, I, I'm, I'm, so, well, are you actually going to listen to the reply? So, I listen to you patiently, you should now do the same. So, for one, I, I agree with a lot of your sentiments. However, we Christians have learned from our history that where Islam dominates, the church ends up being persecuted. And whilst I agree, in an ideal world, we should live in the kind of situation that you're describing, that where, where we can get on with one another in peace. And there are lots of examples where we've got on with one another in peace. Um, the reality is that, that much of that peace has been broken in history and churches and Christians have suffered by their millions because uh, Muslims have abandoned that peace. Um, the, the, furthermore, 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 hold on, I didn't interrupt you. Furthermore, I would like to just point out that you're better than your prophet. You are, are, are talking noble truths, truths that I think are virtuous and good, but those truths are not ones that you share with your prophet. Muhammad did not teach the idea of everyone get along with their neighbor. What he taught was the supremacy of Islam and the caliphate. And Muslims have practiced that for 1400 years. Now, there are definitely, and you're a living proof, that there are lots of Muslims that are better than Islamic teaching. And I, I'm fully aware of that. I'm not saying every Muslim follows Islam. Lots of Muslims don't, and they're better because they don't, like what you're doing. But one second, one second, one second. But the reality is, the reality is, we can't just talk about this context. Because this context is not the only thing that informs politics, economics and society. We've got to look at this context in the light of 1400 years of history. And the light of 1400 years of history tell us that where Islam dominates, Christians suffer. And so that means that as a Christian, because Islam teaches injustice, that as a Christian, I have to oppose Islam. So was there a time, was there a time where the Muslims and the Christians were living, and the Jews, were living in harmony? No. There's never been a time when Muslims and Christians have been living in harmony, ever? Never in 1400 years have Muslims, Jews and Christians lived in peace. For 1400 years, Muslim militants have tried to conquer the world. So, I mean, I spoke to my friend that came from Jerusalem the other day, and he said the Muslims, the Christians and the Jews are living in harmony in Jerusalem right now. Under Israel, not under Islam. Perfect. But, and in Jerusalem, though. Under Israel, not under Islam. So before Israel was, was formed, were they not living in peace then? No. Muslims were trying to conquer Christian lands for 1400 years. In, in Jerusalem, prior to the, Islamic, prior to the Israeli, Israeli state, the state of Israel, are you saying that in, <laughs> prior to the state of Israel, there was no time in Jerusalem where Muslims Jews and Christians were living in harmony. Is that what you're saying? Muslims conquered Christian land in Israel. So the very example that you're pointing at has come from Islamic violence. Oh, so you're saying that there's always been war in Jerusalem, yeah? Before, before Israel. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that for 1400 years, Muslims have conquered lands bordering their own. 
and then they've taken over those lands and gone on to try and conquer other lands that border their own. They've done that for 1,400 years without stopping. Okay. Until, until we Christians stop them by force. Well, as far as I'm aware, although I don't have the, maybe the same historic knowledge as yourself, as far as I'm aware, I believe that there was a time where Muslims, Christians and Jews were living in harmony. Christians lived as dhimmis in Islamic lands and that meant that they were second-class citizens in Palestine, which was their homeland. Well, right now, it seems that Muslims, Christians and Jews are living in harmony in London. So let's just keep it that way. Under, under secular liberal law, not Islam. So in every way, don't wait, brother, brother, in one second, in one second. So, so I'm going to I'm going to stop on this. You have a good heart. I want to say publicly. I want to. I want to say. Well, well, let's put it this way. I can only. I, if you right, okay. I'm going to talk to you because he doesn't want to talk to me. So, so in terms of this brother, I can only judge him by his words. I can't see into his soul. So he might be a hypocrite. He might be pretending to be something that he isn't and saying really nice words on camera, but in his heart, he's got lots of hatred. He could be right. He might be that person. However, I'm going to take him at his word because that's all I've got to go off right now. And what I see is a man who is better than Islam, a man who is better than Muhammad. And I applaud him for it. This Muslim is a great human being. It just happens to be that he's a crap Muslim. Because Islam, when you look at Muhammad, has for 1400 years conquered and pillaged and raped its way across the world. And we Christians need to remember that. Christians in Palestine lived as second class citizens. Christians in Egypt lived as second class citizens. Jews and Christians in Spain under the Islamic occupation lived as second class citizens. We must remember that whilst there are evidently good Muslims, is that doesn't mean that Islam is good. And ultimately, there's always that pointings of their prophet seriously and act on it. Okay. And that means, and that means, no, because we're stopping. And that means, that means that we Christians must allow our history to inform our politics. We want to love brothers like this, men of peace. Likewise, but we likewise, must oppose the likewise, ideology of Islam. Likewise, likewise, just because there are bad Christians, it doesn't mean that Christian is bad. So because you've got a Christian here who's taking every opportunity to try to indirectly offend uh, or insult Islam, it doesn't mean that Christianity is bad because he's not the majority of Christians. Is it bad One to second, let me finish, Muslim. let me finish. The majority of my Christian friends that I sit down with and eat with in this city called London are fantastic guys and we don't get involved in mocking each other's religion. If anything, we might sit down together and try to share information about strategies to combat Satan or strategies to increase our, our faith. Do you understand? But you, on the other hand, are coming to Speaker's Corner week in, week out, and all you seem to want to do, rather than spreading the beautiful message of Christianity to a certain degree that we agree with, and us talking to you about the beautiful things in Islam that you agree with, rather than finding that common ground, you want to just start going around and causing division in the park. So, so allow me to reply. So, so allow me to reply. So allow me to reply. Um, the brother says that those bits of Christianity that agree with Islam are beautiful. One must therefore assume that he thinks those bits that disagree with Islam are ugly. Um, however, no he didn't, but that's what I assume. However, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the brother just condemned his own prophet. He just said that it is offensive to, you know, you come to the park week in and week out offending Islam. Well, Muhammad offended paganism in the Arabian Peninsula. <laughs> Muhammad offended Christianity in the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad offended Judaism in the Arabian Peninsula. So if it is wrong for Bob the Builder in the 21st century to come and offend Islam, to challenge Islamic teaching, then by his own logic he should be consistent and he should condemn his prophet for doing that in the 7th century. But, but he won't do that. Because, and this is what it boils down to, is that the only good Muslim 
for an Islamist. The only, and I'm not saying you're an Islamist. I'm not saying you're an Islamist. But the only good Muslim for an Islamist is a doormat. We Christians are not called to be doormats. We're called to stand up against Islamists. There are Islamists in the park that want to impose Sharia law that would turn the Christians into second-class citizens and execute Christians who leave Islam. So let's see if this brother is a good Muslim or an Islamist. One simple question before we leave. Do you believe that Christians who leave Islam to become Christian and then spread their Christian faith amongst Muslims should be executed? Right, your name is Bob the Builder. If your name is... Stay out of it, please. Your name is Bob the Builder. Your name is not Bob the Bulldozer. As Bob the Builder, you should be trying to build bridges with the people around you. If you're going to start bulldozing other faiths, call your name Bob the Bulldozer. Because when you say Bob the Builder, then what you should do is build bridges. You're living in a society where there's Muslims and Christians and people of other faith. A lot of us were born and bred in London like yourself. I don't know, maybe you weren't born in London, you look like you're from the sticks. But anyway, point being this. Either change your name to Bob the Bulldozer or start building bridges. One or the other. Which one do you want to choose? Have a good day, bro. God bless. Now notice he didn't answer the question. He didn't answer the question. Whether he supports the execution of Christians who leave Islam. Now, I don't know what his opinion is. It may be one way or the other. I have no idea. But I do find it strange that he was reticent to answer the question. So Christians, if Islam teaches injustice, and it does teach injustice, and we Christians are called to combat injustice, and our faith does call us to combat injustice, in answer to his question, why do I come down here and bulldoze Islam every week? It's because Islam teaches injustice, and as a Christian, I'm commanded to fight injustice, so therefore, I'm commanded to fight Islam. And I don't think it's wrong to fight an ideology that wants to make me a second-class citizen and to kill my brothers and sisters who want to leave Islam and who do leave Islam. So on that point... No, 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 we, I'm going to stop now. Unless you're going to answer my question, I'm going to stop. No, no, you're not. Okay, do you want to stop the camera? All right, so basically Hatun has informed me that somebody has taken my account and used it to incite racial slurs against her and her team. And I've, I've also been informed by Bob himself that on his channel, I've made statements about BLM through an account. That isn't, that isn't operated by me, that isn't my account. So I, I, what I need people to do is if they see this account, to basically look, onto my, look on my channel. If there's no videos on it, and, this, and the bio doesn't say Acts 219, then please block it or ban it or remove it from your service because it's not, it's not my account. Just need to inform you of that. God bless. I wanted to speak ever so quickly about cyberbullying and harassment. So it's come to my attention that there are some online, and we at SoCo are Soldiers of Christ online, who seek to... Um, rebuke, chastise, uh, bully, harass, um, dox, uh, and basically uh, act not in the way of Christ. Christ was never online, obviously, but if he had have been, he may have been rebuking Pharisees, but he certainly wouldn't have been terrorizing Christians. So what I'd like to say is, um, without making it too obvious, what I'm speaking about all forms of cyberbullying are uh, are not to be desired. Christians, please do check your own eyes for specs before you start logging around the place. Um, there is, within Christ, there is no social justice movement. There is only the, the, the objective justice of God. God alone is the judge. If you don't like somebody, if you don't like the words that they use within a free speech um, advocating society, please don't have anything to do with them. As Bob once said to me, he's right here, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, but we can also be second cousins, third removed, who sit in the corner at Christmas and don't speak to each other. The point is we don't all have to be buddy buddy. If you don't like someone's politics, by all means, love them, bless them, and you know, whatever. If you don't like their personality, don't seek to conform them to your own image, because hi, your own image is not the image we are seeking to be conformed to. Paul says that we should 
take each thought captive and conform it to the image of Christ. And therefore, please do check your own heart. Don't start calling people racist. Don't start calling people transphobe. It's meaningless in terms of theology. Like, check God for transphobia and then, you know, get on with your own lives. Please do. I'm saying this in love. I don't want to have to get involved because my name has been brought into it, but I will. So please do. I love you all, even the ones that it's really difficult to love. I still go the extra mile. Please do pray for each other. Love each other and pray for us at the park and we'll pray for you. And nighty night. God bless. Bye. Basically, all I'm trying to say is that anyone who... So, so obviously, I'm going to get angry. Obviously, I'm going to fight. Obviously, I'm going to go mad because they're violating the most important human in the universe, which is the Holy Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Obviously the lies that have been said about him, yeah, the lies that have been said about him in the books, we don't, we don't take that. We take from the Quran, we take from Al-Kafi, Bihar al-Anwar, all these books we take from. But we don't take the disrespect from the Hadith books. Because in the Hadith books, I don't blame some Christians, they read Hadith books and then they, they, they start, you know, but these Hadith books are fake. You understand? So don't believe in those lies attributed to the Prophet. So like I said, Thank you. I, I don't mean to, I take it back, like I didn't, it's out of context, yeah? I don't mean that I'm going to kill anyone, so I just wanted to say that. I'm just saying in a, like, that's the laws of God, isn't it? But I, I'm all about peace and love and that, isn't it? I love, I'm, don't think bad about me, please, yeah, I love you. And Christians, I love you so much. I love you, all Christians, I love you. The good ones, not the ones that disrespect God and his prophet. No, but the good Christians out there, I love you so much. I love you, I love you. Thank you, thank you, Mo. Thank you, Mo. Thanks, my bro. All right.